Oh, oh, okay. Do we even want to try and talk about the iPad, or do we just want to move on? <laughs> I want to talk about the iPad. I, I just think, I mean, uh, if you want to go below six ninety nine, what is that dumbass? There was a these two chicks. Um, uh, but then, then, go ahead. Just, I just this video. You're not gonna like what I'm gonna say, but I think the new iPad is gonna be a massive sell. Oh, of course! All the Apple people will go out and buy it. I have to have it. It must have my baby. No, you think that just because it's 4G is the first 4G slate? Or it's a 4G iPad? No, no, Kami, do not fr no bullshit. Right, everybody, this device right here that I have in my hands right here is a 4G slate. It's actually one bit would like. It's called the Pantech. It's actually a seven inch form factor. It's the small. I've been telling Apple to do the same thing and God no problem. Yeah, I mean, this thing has been on the market for a while. It's affordable. It's less than the iPad. It's 4G. It's been 4G. It's a good little device. It's running Android Honeycomb, which Marcel doesn't like, but it's. That's <laughs> the truth. The only hand, the only tablet that's gone against the iPad, which pretty much the iPad dominates in the marketplace. It's like the Kindle Fire. Yeah. It's the no, Fire. no, actually. Uh, AT&T people, if you go into a store and you take a look at the Pantech, they will tell you, we're selling the shit out of this thing. This is like, this is what the store people will tell you. It's actually going real head-to-head -head against the iPad very much. Look, look, look. I won't even entertain this discussion because y'all are giving credence to tablets. And I just think... <laughs> I won't even entertain it. Okay, let it stay at fashionable as long as it wants. It, it's, it's, it, it has no place to go other than to collect dust and, and dust and then let people show them, you know, show it off to each other. Well, you thought basically that most of their dust ops, don't they collect huh? dust? Look, let, let me put it this way. I've heard so many stupid arguments from people, well, 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 I get a Bluetooth keyboard and a mouse. Oh, so you want a desktop in real life. You know, it's like, you get a tablet to go ahead and buy a keyboard and a mouse? What? That's what you do with a desktop. Well, oh, I, wish, I wish it did X, Y, and Z. When the software of, let's just say iOS finally adopts everything that OS X has, is it the same thing as an iPad or not? No, uh, no I, 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 you go right back to being a fucking desktop. I was going to adopt the same thing. Yeah, actually, Mr. Bitt's right. No, I, 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 you know what? I, I usually I agree with Bit. I think he's dead wrong, and I'm basing this on the human factors equation, not the get work done equation. And the reality is, probably seventy to eighty five percent of the end user doesn't actually need a computer. People who are trying to get people who are trying to get actual work done, yes. But what the majority of people are using a computer for is email web browsing and quick in and out little like angry birds functions in which case the, 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 this why am I wrong? most of the people that i know that have tablets whether they're uh, uh, ipads or whatever can't stand typing on the desk well and that's and what the keyboard accessory is for oh, you're right back to a desktop again i mean the second you add a keyboard and a mouse to it to the device so you can prop it up and look at it what what the hell's the difference Okay, I'm going to change the x86 tablets. Okay, what's the point of that? Yeah, it's like, uh, uh, well, no, those, there are. That's like there are niche No, there are niche purposes for tablets. Okay, but I, bit, bit. I'll tell you exactly what the difference is. The difference is, it's a dock. And you're in that mode when you're in that mode, and the rest of the time you have your little happy prippy play device. I know so many people who never checked their email, that the only way they would properly interface with the 21st century would be through a Slate-like device. And that is who that, that is the user that device is targeted for, and the reality is, there's more of them than there are of us. Everybody I know, from grandma to grandpa, and there is a famous YouTube user now, that I won't mention his name because I'm sure he doesn't want to, but he's, he sent messages to me, who was actually defending the iPad, it has no use for it. And, and basically, everybody I know that has a tablet, um, basically, they get frustrated with typing on it. It plays games well, and most of the time, these tablets are becoming these little gaming entertainment things. Yeah, they're, that, that's what they are. They're not writing the letter on the tablet. 
they're going they're going straight to their to their computer. Uh, exactly. And, and look, you can get a desktop for four ninety nine, the same price as an iPad. Get a monitor, everything like that. Runs all the stuff you need. But why is it forty million already since like, the no, first iPad? It's, like, it's, just, it's just such a non. It's like a, such a non sequitur thing to me. You go. Oh yes, I need a tablet. Yeah, great. For what? You know, it's like you're gonna go. You want to go play Angry Birds? Fine, go play. You know what? You can have your little touchy feely experience, playing farm field and all that stuff. That's fun. You want to get real shit done, like doing emails or surfing the web the fastest, and, and experiencing the full web. Everybody I know, and I'm not talking geeks. I'm talking old folks, you know, in their 60s and 70s, from youngins and shit, and their teenagers that are all about, you know, it's so five minutes ago. They all have the same damn story. They like to play games on the tablets, but that's just about it. Some of, some of them do use them for like little e-readers and flipping pages, and some of them have tried to use them to help them in college. All of them have failed. They, they ended up buying laptops. Oh, um, no, no, I agree. Here's the thing what it comes down to. Are you, a, you, no, no, bit, bit, you bit, you just nailed it on the head, and it, it, like I said, it has to do with the top class. Are you dealing with people who consume content or who contribute content? People who contribute content need an actual computing device. People who consume content. Right. We're both consumers and contributors. Oh, oh no, no, no. I, I, bit, I have a list probably just as long as yours of people across the same age demographics that are in love with their slate devices. They have their laptops and desktops are what's gathering dust. They haven't turned them on in months. Yeah. Because they're they're primarily consuming. They they tend not to send out. Oh, well, so they don't write it. Exactly. And I was say it's like, it's like I said there's a there's a class of user out there Who's just going to be, right, this is easier. Watch, I can watch my movies. I can play my Angry Birds. I can check my email. Because people send me emails. And I do like one line responses, which is okay on this keyboard. And, I would say that most, I would say that most, I mean, that's how Windows pervades so, so largely. When these mobile systems, including Android, uh, all of them, it's like, you know, WebOS is my favorite mobile operating system, but I have no use for it on a desktop. Why the hell would I need WebOS on my desktop? And, it, you know, and that's something that HP was, I was very curious on what the hell they meant on putting WebOS on a desktop. But the, the thing of it that it comes down to, to just write a nice email, take my mom's friends, for example, that some of them have become like little Apple fans that have been disappointed by it, you know, just kind of some of the, the limitations they've run into. Uh, they own like an iPad, and what, it was below, what, you know, below their expectations. Uh, and, then and then I have the little teenager, uh, little bitty boppers that go around, and are the same as these stupid CNN news anchors that go up there and go, oh, I just bought one. Isn't that cool? That's cool. Look, look at my little status symbol. I have a status symbol now. So they, they may, may like to do a few things on it, but for the money that they spend on it, a lot of them have buyer's remorse. Oh no no! I agree with that aspect. And that for them, for the for what I'm talking about to happen, they need to become about sixty percent cheaper. They need to be the appliance device, hundred to two hundred bucks. That's not here. That's not here. And what I'm saying is that the second you add a keyboard and a mouse, you circumvented the whole the whole point of having touch. And that's my point: is touch is is is, is a gimmick. It is not. It is not something that is is, is very productive. It's, it's a, it's well, a, okay, but I can undermine your whole. That's intuitive and easy to use. I, I bet I can undermine your whole keyboard and mouse argument the moment the voice control gets good enough to be usable. Oh no! Hey, when that happens, but we're not there yet. Uh, okay, but like I said, uh, this is where, th and see, this right here is where me and Bit diametrically disagree. I'm thinking about two to five years down the road when the missing pieces are built out enough to be cost effective and accessible to the buy, consumer. Then why buy a six ninety nine or five ninety nine or four ninety nine device now? Also, oh, no, no, I agree 100% with that. But I don't think the you want the form factor to just die because it isn't ready yet. And I'm like, I, it ain't gonna happen, Bit. You're gonna be surrounded by tablets in five years, and you're not gonna like it. The big difference. My words were that touch, not voice. I only attack touch. I never. I didn't say anything else. I said touch has nothing over mouse and keyboard, and 
that's all I said. I didn't include voice and all that. So your argument about adding voice has nothing to do with me saying that. Touch no, wrong. but your argument is that because their current form is limiting, slates are just going to die, and they're a fashion trend. Well, when they yeah, exactly in their current form. When we create software that does more, like if iOS starts doing actually concurrent shit that we that you start seeing on a desktop. Uh, okay, so so, so uh, see that you're undermining your own argument right there. You're saying the form factor sucks. No, you're saying the artificial limitations imposed on the form factor make it not so usable, and those are going to go away. There, there's no way they can't. I, I didn't undermine uh, what, what, uh, the form factor of a. Is that an artificial limitation like the walled garden crap like that? Yeah, I'm not talking about. The, the, uh, okay, the are you talking about the current package being offered or the slate I'm form factor? All tablets right now, oh. all tablets right now are, are, are a fad. And they will not be tablets necessarily when the, we're talking about in the future where the operating systems on those devices will be far more concurrent because they will be far more complex than they are now. Apple's main argument right now is they think that this bullshit idea that they think iOS is of uh, quote unquote simplicity and elegance is all crap. It won't be when it finally becomes something that truly is mainstream. It will have to adopt all the complexities of OS X to do things uh, uh, more so than it does now. It'll also have to, people will also be using mouse and keyboard or alternative things other than touch to get stuff done far faster than they're doing it now. You know what? I think things are going uh, to uh, uh, Okay, and that, that that right there is what it comes down to though. I'm arguing the hard I'm arguing the hardware side, you're arguing the software side against the hardware. Well, I'm thinking about the consumer market, like where Apple wants to go. I think they're gonna reverse. Like I don't think iOS is gonna adapt features of OS ten. Uh you see I've seen the reverse happen with like, Quick Mountain Lion, it's adapting features of iOS. Sure it is, but what I'm saying is that if you're going to do more on iOS, if you're going to truly do more, then you, it, it's going to have to have memory management of OS X and, and, and allow concurrency. Other, otherwise, like the well, same... What's the really the point of the launch pad if you don't have a touch screen, you know? Well, you have your little magic oh, pad. Oh, no. Yeah, you, you, they, they sell you magic pads now. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, because Steve Jobs said people don't want a touch screen, they want a magic pad. Yeah, OS X's uh, OS X's had all the all the latest Macs. Okay, they can have the magic tampon and shove up there, you know what? <laughs> no, no, they give you an option. You can get and I think the Mac Pro still comes with the mouse, but IMAX can not between the pad and the mouse. Uh, you do know that Microsoft's uh, Windows Phone Seven is now in their Windows eight. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can I have a lot to say about Windows. I have a whole we have opened up a whole new universe once we get in the wind that's set to Microsoft tonight. Uh, okay, let me ask a question. Do we want to say anything else on the Appletopia and well, that? I think, I think that we're, I think we've got a good conversation going up still with this. Uh, I, the tell you I, the I, truth, I, what? It's going to have to do uh, something with the uh, the whole programming and shit because if Apple goes into this whole, let's just give into the. Uh, to the basic users all the way and, and screw these other people who need complex programs. The device becomes unusable at that point if they go that far. Yeah, yeah. and basically there's no programmers to program the apps anymore. Well, basically there'll be an SDK like with the, uh, I, I know we don't want to talk about game calls, but Nintendo has the, uh, the, the 3DS SDK. It costs like two grand. So if you want to yeah, develop but, Nintendo game, you need two grand. Uh, two to ten grand. Yeah, yeah. but uh, their SDKs run on Windows. They have software SDKs too. Where but the they don't have. But here's Apple with an SDK, but no fucking operating system to put it on. Well, here's the. Th I I don't know. To, I mean, I we, I hate to go back into the console thing, which we still are going to stay out for. But honestly, if they go that way and they dumb it down that much, that is what Apple just turned their entire platform into a game console business model. In which case, they're not selling to developers like like Bit here. They're selling to developers like in the gaming industry, where they license and build this appliance. And access to the platform. And they won't have any tools to build it with. Uh, uh, yeah. Be well, they will, but it'll be expensive. Yeah, they probably have to build it on a Windows system or a Linux system. 
Hey, would you like to develop for a Mac? Okay, you need Windows 8 or Linux kernel 3. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I can just see it now. <laughs> what I find funny, though, is that the people who embrace the game technology is actually Microsoft because, you know, they're the ones who owned all the game franchises like Halo and all that. Yeah, and Apple honestly wanted that. that we was did discuss this last time. We did where where this I just was talking about. You know, they're gonna when we, especially when we got to the TVs. But I, I think we were on a on a good thing. The, no, I, I was right about I think, the Apple TV. Yeah, the, I think Russie and I had agreed that it has to change from what they are today. Oh yeah, I agree. Yeah, today they are very much a very a, a cool thing to have, a very fashionable thing to have. Uh, it's great. Apple's making making bank, and uh, yes, it, isn't it ironic that most Apple users I know owned an iPad, an iPad two, and now they'll probably own a damn iPad device. three. I have no idea what they do with all three of them. You, you know what? I bet the diehard Apple people have like a just a set. In, in, a, in a few years, they're going to be able to build a house of iPads. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all I own. But, but no, it's like where we disagree is I, 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 we both agree that the, for it to become usable, the development has to happen. I am convinced that the industry, because this form factor is ideal for the average user, if the software development happens, I am convinced rather the manufacturers, OEMs, or platform developers want it to happen or not, software developers are going to hack force and prod in the tools they need to make these useful things to provide the consumer with the device they need. And now Apple may get left behind in the dust because of their walled garden as a result of that, but there are plenty of platforms on the market that rather the developers of the platform want you to do it or not, you can hack this tool base in. Oh, All right. Uh, I don't think that, I disagree with that. The, I, I don't think I, I, I disagree with that. Other than my main problem that I have with tablets, as they are, is touch as the main. Now, we all can add keyboards and mouse, but have you added a keyboard and mouse to the iPad? I've tried that. It, it, it doesn't even understand what the hell you're doing. Yeah, I tried uh, on my uh, Toshiba Thrive. Yeah. Like, really? Uh, yeah, I did it. It's like uh, 3 i not like the PC version on it. It doesn't work good. And it didn't work that well. I had the <laughs> keep on the whole click button. It didn't work right. It's very, very, very annoying. It'll let you write maybe an email, but do much, much else. It's kind of useless. Well, but see, that, that right there is a software limitation, not a form sure. factor limitation. No, no, I'm not against it. No, 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 no. I agree on, like, those iMac looking You're talking about putting a regular desktop on the, on a touch, on oh. a handheld, I mean, on a, are you talking about an OS on a, uh, a regular OS on a uh, tablet? Well, it's eventually going to have to come in order to get well, stuff done. Well, I know. I don't think it will really work. I'm going to say, well, it's not optimized. Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah, see, yeah, remember this. Let's say this. Hardware definitely will be able to accept and let us run full-blown OSs. I mean, arms oh, going to like, um, like There was like an X86 smartphone that ran Windows Vista. Remember that? I wanted something like that. Yeah, and, that, and that, that's a horrible user experience. Uh, <laughs> guys. What? You remember the PlayStation 3? They, they used to have the ability to put Linux on it. Yeah, and then they attacked the Linux community, and that was the dumbest thing they ever fucking did. <laughs> yeah, but they used to do it. I mean, everybody who put Linux on their uh, PS3s basically ended up hating it. it well, there could have been driver issues or whatever. No, no, they ran no, it. No, no, it wasn't driver issues. It was a UI issue. That's like that's like Rosetta. Um, the thing of it is, is that hard, uh, hardware and ARM, which is cool. I, the thing I do love about what the tablet uh, fat, fat is bringing is it's bringing the correct architecture, which is yes. which is right. x86. It's making the correct architect architecture be in control. Uh, however, control. we're transferring the flawed hardware for lockdown hardware. all the systems. <laughs> <laughs> but, but eventually, we can, yeah, we we could run a full OS on, on the way ARM is going. I mean, the, the, these they, they're getting quad 
CPUs now quite. You no, know, you can a bit. As we talked about this last um, the show, yeah. the the Linux system on chips. I mean, that's today's ARM systems. We can yeah. run full blown. Systems. No, no, no. I know. Look, we, I thought Beyond doesn't really discuss like like running OS ten. You could literally put. OS 10, you know what the, the, the main stop gap is? It's, it's running on batteries. I guarantee you if they were running on AC power and you just had these ARM chips that were just, okay, well, we don't have to worry about it, all the limitations would just disappear. And let's just let's run a full-blown... Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, you could pretty much do it all, all that you want. And that's what I'm saying. That it will come to that where, no, okay... It's how we use it and what we want to do with it, and those applications that I'm getting. Well, and, and you know what? You're, you're talking about the battery limitation, but this is something we've been doing on laptops for years. All you do is put a power management profile for when you're running off the battery. Mm -hmm. That's all you need to add. My BlackBerry has that as well. Yeah, no, it's yeah. like when I'm running off the battery, throttle the CPU, throttle the usage, and use things. It put, put the damn thing in low gear so it doesn't... <laughs> Drain it, drain the engine, to drain the fuel tank too fast. Okay. But anyway, I, I definitely, what I'm, all I'm saying now is that, look, there's a lot, we all know this. There's all these Apple purists and pundits and fanboys who think this is the next best thing since sliced bread. Quite frankly, it's a, it's a, it's a fad, it's very profitable. Uh, but, what, it, but once you want to put it to some real use, you essentially take, take a device and make it something that it was designed to replace, essentially, in software and in hardware. And then if it, and then your whole argument becomes a joke. And that's my point. Well, but see, that's not an argument against the form factor. That's saying the current software is limiting. A, a lot of things are currently limiting. I mean, let's put it, I mean, uh, 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 I bet you, does Android respond well? I have not used it on Android. Does Android handle a, a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard? Uh, are these USB? It, it, it depends on the device. Some of them are great. Some of them not so much. Hmm. I think Microsoft's got a, bad, a badass game plan. Why well, are these USB? But the mouse um, it acts just like a but basically a touch screen. Bas basically, you only one click. You can't. It's like an old Mac. You can't right click. <laughs> I don't like Microsoft Windows 8. Well, uh, we're gonna get into that in a minute. <laughs> so, 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 my iPad, iPad. But yeah. anyways, wait a minute. Uh, about uh, Apple uh, concentrating more and more on games, it's funny because uh, Apple has no gaming franchises. Not one. They don't own any. But That's yet, by you, you know, th that raises an interesting question because initially Apple wanted nothing to do with games and they realized that that is where their current i platform thrives well and they're clearly designing their hardware after that. Do you think at some point, because they were talking with poaching people from Nintendo and other things, do you think at some point in the next 18 months to 36 months we will see Apple try and create a gaming franchise? Yeah, uh, they'll have to come up with a gaming console first. Well, they already have one, the iPad. Yeah. Yeah, but we need physical buttons, man. Yeah, but, but yeah, here's the thing. A lot of people don't want to game solely on a tablet. I mean, th there are a lot of fun games, I'm sure, that people do enjoy with the, with the whole touch experience. But that might come through the Apple TV becoming like a game. Uh, yeah, uh, honestly, Apple's one of the few companies that if they're smart because they have draconian control over their hardware, that they could do that, that they could just integrate their iDevices into, uh, this is a yeah. platform that's across three or four devices, and well, they, they all... Do it, and it's, both, and it's, a, it's shitty, it's called streaming your iPad or... Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. But I, I'm talking about crap like your Apple TV is the console and your iPad or your iPhone is your controller. And if you're doing a racing game, you know, your iPad or, 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 or iPhone or iPod Touch becomes the steering wheel. And, you know, Apple could e easily do that. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. I, I would probably go with this idea, so he's been pretty good on, on those gaming consoles. But I, I won't I won't stop short of saying well Apple won't use the iPad as the gaming console of the TV they'll they'll use the Apple TV as a gaming console of the TV and maybe come up with controllers or whatever but it's a question whether the controls be ergonomic I don't know what the hell but I mean <laughs> look at the, uh, we use controllers it's a touch yeah. screen yeah. 
Yeah. There really is this, guys. The Apple ecosystem is filled with applications of bullshit and rubbish. And the thing of it is, is that, is that Apple has created... 25 million of them! <laughs> Apple's created its own nemesis in, in, in a sense when it wants to get serious. Uh, um, if, if, if we're going to go into other platforms, Beyond Touch, you, that's a, a redesign of the game. Now, if the game, if there are games that are made for the iPad that are now touch realistic, okay, now they have to be ported over to Apple for the real console deployment. I mean, so these are things to consider. And to me, the Apple ecosystem on iOS is not all that impressive. It's got a lot of good apps, but it's got a shitload of just worthless apps. So, you know, quality over quantity is always my opinion. And quite frankly, developers love the iOS ecosystem as it is now. But let's give it a few years where things start to get serious no. and we need to employ. I'll yeah. tell you, all these, turnkey, all these turnkey developers that don't know shit about programming and just want to really out a little shit application that doesn't do much, you're not going to be in play anymore. Well, you know, I, I, you know, I would agree with you if I didn't work in the web industry, but that is something that flooded the web industry starting in the early aughts, you know, all this. You don't have to know anything about CSS and HTML and you just need uh, Dreamweaver. Yeah, Dreamweaver or Microsoft yeah, tried, but... Dreamweaver is a good, but Dreamweaver is a fairly good tool, but the thing of it is, it is still is limited, but... Yeah, well, no, and, and then you have, what is it, Dream, and, and then, you know, people don't, because people who are using, who are overly dependent on Dreamweaver don't know anything about CSS or creating their own divs or, or areas, then they have to create this other application called, I think it was Fireworks, so people can break the page up, and it's like, it's like basically, their whole, and, and that's the thing, and you know what, there are whole design houses that they're so dependent on that they'll only hire people who know how to use that tool. What did I say? I talked about when we when the, when the metal or when rubber meets the road is, is where the high end apps start coming in. I'm not ever saying that the, the cheap the cheap shit's gonna go away. We have cheap software all over the place in the desktop environment as well. But you know, a lot of it gets overlooked and a lot of people try you know try to make their space in it. The same thing that happened with your shake and bake websites. But when the med when you have a total ecosystem under control, as Apple does, you know, where it's no longer going to be like a side install, it has to go for the Mac store. Think about think about that difference. We used to look for our installation software either at the store, we'd walk in and we'd have big names and stuff like that. You go on the damn Mac App Store or even the iOS app, uh, iOS app store, and it's a bitch to find a, a, a worthwhile application. To be honest with you, and I've tried. Well, and you know what? Like it or not, that's where the whole damn industry is going. Windows is going there. Linux has largely been there. But I think a lot of people like it. I think Rim responded correctly in trying to make quality, like a quality section of apps, but they still have to, look, tablets. Well, no, no, Bit, I'm going to tell you right what, what's going to happen is exactly what's happened on every platform. Somebody makes a curation app, which basically makes the cream rise to the top and it becomes this mandatory thing on every platform hey what's the good curation app okay i'm going to use that one because i can't I find sh I, yeah i can't find shit in this marketplace but the curator tells me where the gold is <laughs> but, I'm All right. still, but anyways i was just gonna say it's funny that apple is now in the gaming industry with no zero franchises you got Microsoft, their competitors, who's got like Halo and so many uh, different franchise games and so many different gaming developers as well as having a gaming device called the Xbox 360. Mm, yeah. Right. Hey, well, so, let's see notes. So right, just, oh, <laughs> oh, now we want to look at my notes. <laughs> Oh, come on, y'all are just going off. Let's go play Angry Birds. Are you going to ring? You know what? I, I, all right. You know, we're going to, on the next section, we're going to have to, like, have follow-up. But go ahead, decide it. I was going to say, though, when all you guys say that Apple is more and more into games, it's really their competitors who are. No, no, I know this, I just... 
But they, let's, let's look, what we're discussing is they're not mainstream games. But they, their device had no other purpose in life other than to like play Angry Birds and Farmville. Okay. They, they, Steve Jobs was hoping for something more productive. What happened? Well, no, but wait, you know what? The moment they decided to lock the platform down, they guaranteed it was going to go that way. No, 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 no. It was locked down from the very beginning before yeah, there was a new draft store. Yeah. No, um, I know that, but see, that was the thing. When you no, locked out, when you lock the developers out of the platform, the developers it caters to is the Angry Bird type of platform. <laughs> Guys, wait, 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 wait. Let's just slow down. The purpose for the device, most people could not find. That's what goes back to my main argument. Most people couldn't find it to supplant or replace their main computer. And the use they found for it, which became very entertaining, was these touch games that, that have now thrived, made a huge business for Apple. And if that is contrary to, a, I, I guarantee it, to the original vision that Steve Jobs yeah, had. Apple, no, no. Right. Right. Well, well, we're not talking about the major gaming franchise. Look, what was the response that happened when, when iOS comes up? Well, we, we can do this and we can do this, but well, let's just let's, let's make it fun. And it was easier to make games, honestly, because of limitations, than making some real, real I productive. Know. I'm going to have to slightly disagree because I had the original iPod Touch, and all and with the, with the OS on there only allowed me to uh, uh, download uh, video, download music, uh, mm -hmm. look at videos I couldn't even make because there was no camera. And contacts, Google Maps, the app, the, the YouTube app came later, but there was no app store, nothing. I that. But that's not what I'm. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is that when they were involved, um, when they first started yeah. um, open up their APIs to developers, the, right. the only thing you could make was games with those APIs, right? Exactly. Yeah, it first started off in just Safari only, and then we finally got native. But the thing of it is, is that with other limitations, we couldn't really do, we, you can't really do much in iOS like you can in OS X. I think and it so, basically started out as just nothing more than an MP3 player. Well, okay. And then okay, it but, evolved into that. But he's talking about when they first opened up their APIs. They didn't open all of them. They just opened up, okay, you can play make games now and really nothing else. <laughs> well, no, and like, that was the thing. If Steve Jobs was really envisioning this productivity device, that was the dumbest way possible to go about it. No, For instance, I tried, no, no, no. Make, I tried to make a print server for iOS for the longest time. We weren't allowed access to, to really do that kind of thing. Finally, there were, um, through stupid third-party methods where we'd send, a, send it to a client on your computer, which would then send to your parent. Finally, Apple adopts this stuff. These are the kind of things that we were very limited limited uh, by on iOS that lent, iOS lent itself to say, well, what, if I'm a developer and it's so popular, I want to make money as a developer. What am I going to develop? Am I going to develop a hospital applica application? No. Well, there's no local DB. Uh, database on iOS. You can get some third party, Sybase of fucking ever to get their kind of database, but then we're only allowed a certain allotment on it. By the way, kudos to Windows. Thank you, Microsoft. We finally made local DB, which is MS SQL on uh, Windows Mobile 7. Kick ass. Anyway, the uh, the thing of it is, is that uh, we were we limited as public. So, like, what do I want to build? What am I going to build? Uh, you know? Ben, I actually have a question on that because since I'm not currently a software developer, albeit I'm trying to learn. Uh, how does Android handle that? Because you do need database access. Android has SQLite, but it's not native to it. You, just, you, you can use it. I mean, it's you can pretty much use... Uh, so why it's a little more problematic, there is a way to get there from here? Yeah, I, I gave up, like, um, you pretty much... Pretty much, uh, SQLite is is the. I, I know what SQLite oh. is. It, it's a it's a limiting version of SQL. It's 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 your, it's own little private database with an Android, but um, uh, it, Android still doesn't allow. It's, Android is still very much like iOS on that front, and I am I am actually really liking what Microsoft is allowing. Uh, uh, okay, oh. now now I got to ask the next question. How does WebOS do it? WebOS is 
same SQL life, but um, you can use Preware if you break it, and you can get some other database applications on it if you want. Okay. What about uh, with iOS now? I heard they do dynamic linking. Does that make things a lot easier for you as a developer? Dynamic linking? Yeah. Yeah, on some, uh, yeah, that's what, yeah. Yeah, but without the additional toolkits, that doesn't really fix the problem he's complaining about. I use Quick Office, which allows me, which is nice. All right, one more closing uh, question before we end this part is like, um, would you rather have limited hardware uh, or limited software? Like, limited would, you have good, would, would you rather have expand, like, um, let me give an example. Would you rather have Windows NT 4.0 Uh, well, okay. Um, yeah, because here's the thing. At the end of the day, even if the software is archaic, as long as it's not locking you down, you can reinvent the wheel for it. Yeah, I, I can do more with NT4 than I can on files. Because at the end of the day, as long as the software allows you to build on it and get access to the tools you need, even yeah. if out of the box it's very limiting, you Why can you build it out. NT4, I know they'd be like, what? <laughs> Yeah. I'm just saying that, like, the mainstream, like, you know, like, if the mainstream user, if you give them an NT4.0 machine, like, run the opinion for you, they're like, what? How do I get on YouTube? You know, how do I go on Facebook? <laughs> well, you say that, Tommy, but honestly, a lot of the lower-end mobile devices are, are um, uh, way more powerful than a, a P4. So, I mean, the reality is... I know. Is I, know. Like, I mean, the thing of it is you asked, I guess your first thing was is would I have iOS or NT4, you know, by limiting hardware or whatever. I, I, I take the software that is the most scalable. Um, the, 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 the thing that it comes down to is that Apple's involvement, evolution, whatever you want to call it, lent itself to making a profit in an ecosystem, games became the mainstay. Because what, for, us, for instance, I could make SMS apps where we could, you know, where we could breach into the SMS and be able to, that was disallowed for the longest time. Uh, I tried to make very productive apps that I found were useful that were a total shutdown in iOS APIs. So I, I, I as a developer, basically, okay, well, what makes profit? Let's just make a game. It's standalone. It's doing a damn fucking thing. It doesn't have to access anything but run. You know, and, and you, you know what? I, I want to see somebody make uh, a, an iOS game where, like, the bonus stage is, this is how much money you've wasted. This is how much money you've wasted. <laughs> you know, people, people take, people take, um, I can tell you how many developers, like, try to use Dropbox and all these repository things to try to, you know, get around mobile. And sure, there's, like, there's, like mobile limitations, but it doesn't have to be. On, on the software side. And I think Microsoft's going to prove it. I think WebOS will prove it. RIM is proven it already on the playbook. And... Well, and you know, Ben, honestly what I see somebody doing is on the more open platforms like Android and WebOS, even if the toolkits aren't there, I see people hacking in the toolkits. You can jailbreak every... Oh, yeah. The most useful things that you want to do, every one of my iPhones I had jailbreak to get it to do what I wanted to do. <laughs> every one of them. You had to break them. All of them. Yeah, I had a jailbreak, and and um, it's funny I don't have to jailbreak my my my, my playbook. I don't, I, and I don't even have to jailbreak my BlackBerry. It does exactly what the hell I wanted it to do. <laughs> Out of the box, bam, no problem. Hey, did you jailbreak if you wanted to? <laughs> um, you know, Rim uh, has a bunch of with even with their old OS, you can go to like these websites that have like carrier neutral applications and all kinds of crap. There's there's a big ass world for Rim. Uh, out there on the internet, that if you want to, let's put it this way: AT and T hasn't released OS seven point one, but I have it on my AT and T phone. You know, that so is doing very well. Uh, well, look, Rim, Rim, Rim is it, 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 it's just because they've fallen from number one. This doesn't mean they're not necessarily doing well. I think they're doing better. Yeah, I, I, I think they're they're, all, they're they're still not in the they're not in the red. They still have no debt. You know, they're they've got a lot of cash in the bank. So, Rim, I think, is fine. They're going to they're gonna get their footing. Uh, 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 so, basically, back in 
day, if you wanted to get a smartphone, you didn't, the, when the iPhone exists, you had to get RIM or you had to get Windows CE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And see, I, the only thing, the bad thing, and, I, and it's good, those two, the, uh, I forget their names, that stepped down is that OS 7 uh, of BlackBerry should have been released. Uh, in, in, in 2008, 2009, and, and and BlackBerry would have probably maintained market share. There, I can do more shit with OS 7, which is not even QNX based. It's still their Java based, you know, runtime stuff on on OS 7.1. I'm totally happy. I I, I I find myself using my BlackBerry sadly more than my WebOS phone. Now, are there quality apps inside the uh, BlackBerry? Oh, market? God, yeah. There's lots of quality. I've got everything I need. Man, I got text editors and all kinds of shit. FTP applications. Does he have a compiler? <laughs> huh? No, I can't compile. No, no, I never expected a mobile platform to be able to compile and fly. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I never, not, not yet, not yet. Well, the reality is, I wait. You, you, you can actually. I, I, some people release some of the compilers, and there, with, uh, if you, uh, root your Android devices, you can actually develop your apps on them. But you don't want to, because yeah, it, it's. For some. Yeah, um, look, I've got a keyboard and a mouse, and I can do it far faster than I can on a mobile device, right? It's not just that. The, I mean, their current renditions of them. It, they're not. If they don't, they wouldn't do it efficiently. It would be a considerable waste of resources. Draining the shit out of your battery. Yeah, because when you're when you're doing something like render and talk about hyping everything, if you compiling, talk about hyping everything and to charge it, you know. <laughs> yeah, but then why would you want to? Okay, but you have a place to plug it in. I guess you're at the airport. I don't know. I guess there could be the extreme situation where you're like, oh shit, you know. I've just left the meeting and I'm on my way to fly home and there's something wrong. I got that real quick. Yeah. yeah. And that, I've been there. Trust me, IT is always like, I needed, I needed it fixed yesterday and it pays a lot of money to be able to get those. Oh, and it would be nice to have the option given no other choice, but it's not plan A. Then the question is, why, why aren't you holding the laptop? Why aren't you an owner of a laptop that could do it? Right? We're forgetting that, you know, I, I like these ultra books. I actually played with one where you can touch it and have a keyboard. Mounted. These are pretty kick ass. I, I know it's Intel driven, but still, it, it makes more sense to me to own an ultra book. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and bit we have a lot of these ultra books coming out with the little uh, Tegra ARM systems. Yeah. I mean, look, I have my BlackBerry playbook. It, it, uh, the tablets to me, I, I even said, uh, I, I believe it was Bob that sent me. I don't know who it was. Somebody, somebody. Where, where did, he, did Bob say he couldn't make it tonight? I don't know where he is. Try him again. Uh, I think it's Bob. He's sure. not even online. Somebody asked me, if, should I get a BlackBerry playbook? And my, I emailed him back. I said, look, I'm not a fan of any tablets. Period. I, said, I, I was like, why do you want a tablet? And I, I, got, I, I got the BlackBerry playbook because it was cheap on as hell when I got it, and I, I wanted to have a way to say, okay, what is a, what is a tablet, uh, I, 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 I don't want to speak out of my ass, I want to be able to have a tablet in hand to like test a lot uh, of uh, uh, Okay, but you say you don't want to speak out of your ass, and you say you hate Android, you say it sucks, what particularly about the Android UI that is it that makes you think it sucks so much? Uh, on, a, on a tablet device. On a, on a smartphone device, and I've owned two Android devices, it, it is too much to do simple tasks. Give me so, an example of a simple task. Oh my God, I, wanted to, I wanted to switch tasks. It took forever just to do it on Android. I wanted to copy and paste. I didn't like it. It's method of But copy. this is, okay, uh, were, you, were, you, uh, uh, what, were you using Android 2 or Honeycomb? I, I, had, I had one phone Honeycomb. And Android. I have no uh, uh, okay, let me ask a question. Because in Honeycomb, the way it works is you push that little button in the lower left-hand corner, and you have all the apps. How is what's hard about that? It does not list all the apps. Yes, it does. It, it lists does all the running apps. No, it does not. No, it does not. The only thing with the app is still there. Yeah, it's most recently used. It's another browser. Yeah. Okay, I, I I'm gonna test that right now. I'm gonna just start launching That's apps and. The, the, your little freaky little task list is, is the same thing as iOS. I tweeted that three times and said, screw you, Android. 
going to just copy to iOS. Your little fucking tasks thing where you can swipe it fucking sideways is nothing more than a browser history. Sorry, Preston, it is. They use dynamic memory management in an ice cream sandwich. Uh, oh, okay, but your goal is to switch. Out. Your goal is to switch between the active running processes. How has that not achieved that? I didn't use ice cream sandwich, I said. But I, I haven't used I, I told you I used honeycomb. Yeah, I'm talking about honeycomb. Honeycomb, did, I, it didn't work. It didn't do that on my phone. My honeycomb, when I use the... No, uh, honeycomb's not on phones, bit. On that little Zoom thing, whatever the fuck it was. That Zoom uh, tablet thing, whatever it was. But I'm saying on honeycomb, when I, when I installed the advanced tasks and installed all my tasks, I had to kill them that way, and I still looked in that, down that dock here right there, because most recently used apps, yeah, it's still there. Gingerbread was on my... Uh, Help me with these names, guys. I had a sprint phone. Uh, okay, honey, uh, it, two, three, or four. No, I had gingerbread on two phones. On the uh, sprint, the, uh, EV, is it the EVO, that big screen fucker? The ones that are my YouTube videos, for fuck's sake. Okay. Oh, I forget the goddamn names of those things. And yeah, you and I are going to do a, an Android teardown at some point, because I honestly want to, I find it sufficient. You tell me it's way insufficient, but okay. I do. argument. It doesn't work like my web OS. It doesn't work like my Mac. Therefore, it's wrong. <laughs> if, if, if I'm on a touchpad, if I'm on something that uses touch, it better freaking manage touch to the most efficient possible way at all. Android sucks at showing me everything it wants to run in, in a manner that I can access quickly, other than a browser. Web OS and RIM are the only two operating systems on mobile that give you true task killing and true, and true task overview. Android ice cream does not do that. Either. Android ice cream took the way of fucking Apple and made of a goddamn little iOS bullshit little fucking drop doc crap that does nothing more than so old oh, you did use it at one time. Um, and I know that for a fact about ice cream sandwich. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah the, the thing of it is is that Android has every up and down. Now, my colleague who owns, I, he owns a tablet, and I don't know if it's an Asus or Ace, you forget he has ice cream sandwich on that, and it was pushed to his device. He was able to get the ice cream sandwich update. He bought it originally with honeycomb. Mm -hmm. He doesn't even like ice cream sandwich. He want, he's, every day that I go in the office, he's found a new UI to help him navigate that fucking tablet better. And I keep laughing. It's like, yeah, because Android, if it's a touch device, it needs to harness touch the best. iOS is deplorable. Maybe Android's a little bit better than iOS. But those two operating systems are nowhere near, when it comes to touch, in handling a mobile operating system as VBX does in WebOS. That's just, it, it, that's how it is. Uh, I can't tell you any other way. And it's a touch device. Android is very much like a, a desktop thing where you have every nook and cranny has a feature and do all that tailored. That is where it shines over WebOS, but I don't use that kind of thing in a touch environment. See, that, that right there is the difference between you and me. I use those utilitarian features, and to me, that's what's missing in WebOS. It needs those utilitarian features. WebOS has everything that you can imagine in terms of... Uh, 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 okay, well, you know what? We'll do that. We'll be cranky geeks, and you can show me... We can show each other, but mine does this, but you're, we'll, we'll, we'll have that argument. <laughs> And also the other thing that, that you get on Ice Cream Sandwich is that Ice Cream Sandwich is not using concurrency as much as it used to. The previous versions of Android were awesome at concurrency. But uh, I've noticed they've, they've taken the role of iOS. It's just, oh, God, here we go. Okay. You know, it's like I can move a card on WebOS. Like you are you are in love to death with the card system. It <laughs> must be a card. If it's not cards, it's wrong. <laughs> no, not necessarily. I do put put Android over iOS. I didn't say necessarily I hate Android terribly. 
It's just. It's just not your iOS. It's just not your web OS, so it sucks. <laughs> no, I didn't, wait a minute. I've owned Android devices. I've owned three iOS devices. I'm not rag. You don't catch me on these shows ragging so much on Android as I do on iOS. I I I still want to make because sh- it, it's um there there was here here's the deal there a lot of people have like bashed on the it, 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 I, I the Zoom was not cooked yet I will be the first to admit that it was it was it was honeycomb before it was cooked so if you mess with the Zoom early on it's like uh, that sucked um, later it got a little better cooked um, and it, all the people who were making gingerbread tablets should be shot <laughs> because it, it yeah. no. look, look, look. It, you and I already have a show where we went over the previous versions of Android where I was trying to get you and you said oh well it does this and I said I can't remember when I had my HTC Evo in my hand and we were we were going over comparisons I haven't used ice cream sandwich, ice cream sandwich fully um, I haven't used ice cream sandwich yet. Yeah, I can't speak on that. But my coworker has ice cream sandwich, and yeah, I can tell you, ice cream sandwich. Uh, they should have brought maybe gingerbread features into it, where we have real task management. Versus I, 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 until I get my hands on ice cream sandwich, I'm gonna have difficulty speaking on it. However, um, I think when you're trying to make this unify the devices thing, it's a mistake unless you have an adaptive UI. And the same way we're bashing on Microsoft for Windows 8 and screwing up the desktop, I'm going to bash on Google for the idea of the ice cream implementation because you need slightly different UIs on the phone form factor versus the slate form factor. It doesn't mean you need different OSs, but you need the UI to be adaptive, which it isn't. And I, right. Hey, cut, cut. one ring, roll them all. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're going to get into Microsoft. We, we, we're gonna, but, but, Russ, you need to cut it, and we need to go into your points, because you obviously spent some time writing in these 2 p.m. things, uh, and 1.59 p.m., and, and, you know, we, we should go over that. I mean, you... I, I, oh, we we, we kind of already did go over that stuff. It's... Well, you're talking about, like I said, we have three close PC products, the iPod, the iPhone, and the iPad, which is a very high product. product. Um, it says a revolutionary device to find a whole new category. Um, we kind of so talked about that. <laughs> you know what, though? I get. I. I. I'm gonna take a note here. Um, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that that uh, Tim Cook did it, or who was it? Was it Tim Cook that said it? <laughs> Apple this. Apple this time. I heard a statement where it made it clear though that iPad wasn't meant to replace the desktop. It was meant to help it. In other words, it wasn't the worst was companion device. Exactly. And I was like, holy shit. Yeah, it basically that's a comment only Tim Cook could make. Steve Jobs could never admit that. I don't know, maybe maybe Steve Jobs did. I, I don't I'm sure he did privately. He would never admit that publicly. You, you're you're talking. Are you talking about this comment right here? We said in order to uh, and like now we had to set out to create the iPad. We set out to create not just a new product but a new category. We said uh, in order to do that, we had to design a, a device that could do the things you do most often. Now that is a big order. And we asked the users, you know, where he starts admitting, you know, uh-huh. basically it can't. What are you ta- What what comment are you talking about? It, it, I, I, don't know, I just remember it was something that this was to to augment, or I don't know if you use the word augment. It was it was a it, I think the comment here, a companion. It was it was something that it, it, it was just it, it in, in the device order of theme uh, of schemes. It, it it made that the desktop was very but, much. But Steve very Jobs. Much, and, when Steve Jobs introduced the, um, okay, he showed, he showed that we should, we have, we have these lines of product when he introduced the iPad, he showed, we have the, like, we have the, uh, we have the smartphone, uh, uh, bit, we bit, have, we have the laptop. Bit, click on the that, keynotes but. link and click through the seven pages and see if you can find the comment you're talking about. Cause well, there was something about that, I liked how it was stressed, it was that this is not replacing your desktop, kind of. Kind of well, like, Steve Jobs said it was better at key tasks, you know, like browsing the web. Yeah, Steve Jobs, this is going to do everything better. And I was like, whoa, you know, okay, wait a minute now. And 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 that's why I've been ranting, even if you follow me on Twitter, that 
this is not post PC. And the thing of it is, is that I got the impression that Tim Cook is saying, okay, post PC means that okay, your desktop is is now not used for everything. But that, but you know what? My comment to that is that I've had a mobile phone and smart devices, even Windows CE devices, where I could do email and things like that. I even own old Blackberries where I could read email and do other things that. I didn't have to do it with my desktop. So, yeah, but there are Apple fanatics that says, "Oh, we need the stylus, but the best stylus is your finger." Yeah. So that's where I come. That's where my main anger comes into all this thing is that this 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 crap that, that people get into with like a whole touch and, and blah 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 crap that it's we've always had devices that can are working in in, in in parallel with our desktop. Yeah, but I basically looked like a PC. It was like it wasn't really that much because I had a freaking start menu. You know? <laughs> argument that goes back to the argument we were having with the whole the form factor sucks thing and I'm saying no it doesn't it's it's along that same lines and I and I agree with that logic of the device is not meant you, you, you you're if you drink the Kool-Aid that the device in its current form is meant to replace your desktop well of course it sucks but the average user doesn't, a lot of average users don't need, they need this augmentation device. 90% of the time they're doing computing that this is sufficient. Like the average end user, they don't want, they don't want a gaming PC, they want a gaming console. <laughs> yeah, the average user, I'd say, uses these tablets mostly. That's why Apple went the way they went. That's what I've been trying to say. It was You're right, this, I, just, I never disagree with you. I never disagree with you. I, I, I'm just saying, because you guys keep cutting me off, I'm just saying that Apple was forced into uh, turning it into a gaming device, and now they got Game Center because everybody wanted something like, you know, Xbox Live on there. Okay, I'm not disagreeing with you. And I that's why I put Xbox Live on Windows Phone 7. I don't disagree with you. But uh, I was also going to say, uh, I already had, have my predictions for the next iPhone. And the iPhone My predictions for the next iPhone is it's getting that 5X CPU. Yeah. So it's the uh, iPod Touch. That's and right. And there and there's finally gonna be a 64 gig version. <laughs> yeah, you dream. No, because they did that for the iPad. Yeah. What did they have the iPad one? Yeah, but it's time now to do it for the iPhones and stuff. They're going to do I it. Yes, but maybe we want to do 128 while they're at it, too. And finally, the iPhone will be put on 4G. Oh. Yeah, yes. That's exactly... Which is useless in most areas. <laughs> Dude, that's just kind of dumb. I don't, I don't agree with that anymore, because most major cities don't have 4G. Yeah, that's major. That's most errors, not most major things. Uh, uh, Kami, Kami, if you have LTE, it still works. Wait, 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 we're talking over this, I guess. What? I'm saying that Commodore is uh, contradicting himself, because I remember when the iPhone first came out, and it stayed on 3G for so freaking long, and everybody's like, what's the like And they all say, well, why isn't it on 4G? Why isn't it on 4G? Now it's on 4G. They're like, well, 4G's not on the networks. And it's like... Well, at first they're going to complain about Verizon. Yeah. Hey, guys, y'all better shout. I'm going to go check on my kids. Oh, and, and then we'll go on the, to the Google button or whatever it is. Thanks. Okay, I'm going to get some water. Yeah, let me put a hash mark in here and we'll pick up on the other one. Yeah, I'm actually calling this one by uh, whatever sucks. So why iOS or whatever. Oh, I've been leaving the titles out for doing it post. <laughs> okay. I, I knew we were going to go off on tangents and I wasn't even going to try and control the conversation this time. I said, okay, let's go there. <laughs> now Microsoft's got Polly or on their, on their Xbox. Yeah. Hang on um, a minute. I'm going to go get something to drink. What is Microsoft thinking? A lot of things. 